Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Dr. Asi, and today's topics are lab four membranes and lab five enzymes. So let's get started. Okay, so in your uh, lab textbook, if you turn to page um, 42 and, um, and 43 and 44, you will see membranes uh, lab. So uh, this lab starts with uh, membranes and transport. We are going to mostly measure passive transport, which means uh, diffusion and osmosis. As you know, diffusion is um, a free transport goes uh, from high to low downhill using concentration gradient. Uh, osmosis is just a special diffusion of water, uh, exactly the same from high water to the low water. So the way we measure diffusion is uh, we take a, a Petri dish and we actually make two holes in it and put two chemicals in it, one in each hole. First one is put uh, methylene blue, which, uh, and the second one is potassium permanganate, KMN. KMN is a much lighter in molecular weight, 158, uh, versus uh, methylene blue is 374, which is much heavier. And then oh, we close it, and then after 30 minutes, we measure the diameter, which one went faster. So your expectation is uh, the KMN, the lighter one, should go faster, longer directions, or farther away. Um, next experiment is actually finding isotonic point. Isotonic means if you put a, a, a potato uh, or a potato cell inside a test tube, and then put a solution in it. Um, so salt solution, it's actually gonna take some of the salt and it's gonna actually exchange some solutions and then um, it's gonna reach isotonic point which inside potato and outside uh, solution concentrations are gonna be similar, which is the difference is zero. How can we measure that? Using a serial dilution. Serial dilution, first experiment here, uh, of serial dilution, we have six, six large tubes, big tubes. You label them one, two, three, four, five, six. And then um, next, basically, uh, the number six tube number six is gonna be just water, which is gonna have zero concentration. Tube number one is gonna have your highest concentration, like five percent sodium chloride. So you are gonna put water in two. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, and put a 10 mil salt concentration in one, take five, move to two, mix, take five, move to three, take five, move to four, take five, move to five, and don't add anything to six. Six is just water. This way, we actually have a nice concentrations from 5% to next tip is 2.5. The next one is... um. 1.62, the next one is 0. Um, 0. 0.6 and 0. 0.3 and 0. So we will weigh six six potato cubes and then put them each one in, in, in each of tubes. Um, after 30 minutes, we take them out, we weigh them again, and we make a graph. We make a table, which is in um, page 43 in your lab book, and fill up the, uh, this table and then make a graph. Your graph should look like this here, you see. And there should be a point, your line graph crossing x-axis. That's the point, is isotonic point. You need to find that in your experiment. Next experiment is um, basically um, a microscopy experiment. You have two uh, microscope slides. You basically um, put a one small leaf in each and put water in one of them. Second one, you put salt concentration. You put them under the microscope, drove them in zero minute and wait. 15 minutes, drove them again and see um, the salt, one with the salt should uh, get smaller and um, plasmalize, right? The name is called plasmalize, which means it's wilted. But with the water, the one with water in plant, it should get bigger or to not change. So, or turgot, become turgid. We are not gonna do the blood experiment, if you do the same thing with uh, blood cells, uh, basically you will find similar situation. 
uh, uh, in blood cells as well. It's just called shriveled, but in plants it's called plasmalized. Okay, so, and when pl plants take water, they become turgid. So this is a membrane experiment. In um, next lab is enzyme lab, which is lab five. Um, enzyme lab basically uh, we use one enzyme which is called uh, salivary amylase or amylase, and it has an uh, a substrate which is basically in this case is starch. If you mix them up, they should give us uh, smaller sugars like maltose and glucose. And if we put that in a heating block, this test tube, and add Benedict solution, it should change color to orange. And that should give us an idea about enzyme concentration. Um, so enzymes are proteins. If you heat them, usually they denature, they open up. Um, so we only we do the heating at the very last. Um, so for this, you need to turn on your heating blocks, get a big, large, uh, or medium-sized, large uh, uh, beaker with half halfway water, and then um, heat that. We need that heating water to put test tubes in it to actually warm them up to see color change, like orange color. Which tube is gonna give us best orange? Um, we need to prepare seven, uh, seven small test tubes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, label them, add one, one mil water in two, three, four, five, six, seven, add one mil amylase or saliva amylase enzyme from the ice box to number one, take 0.5, move to two, 0.5, three, take 0.5 to four, take 0.5 to five and six, and don't put anything to seven. And then all test tubes get 0.5 milliliter, oh, I'm sorry, two milliliter starch in all of them. And then, you don't need to wait, just mix them and put them in heating block inside the beaker and look at the which color, which tube is give us best color change. So best orange color should tell you orange, not brown, but orange, like you see here in the first test tube, that, that's the best concentration we call optimal concentration. Another experiment is optimal temperature. You prepare test tubes, three test tubes, um, with enzyme and substrate, put them in um, four, I mean four test tubes in four different temperatures. One in ice, one in room temperature, one in incubator 37, one is boiling water, 100 degree. And then after 15 minutes, take them out, put all of them in boiling water at uh, Benedict Solutions, look at the color change. Which, which, which test tube is gonna give us best color? 37 degree here should give us best color because uh, it's the optimal temperature of human body. Uh, so this enzyme works. Next one is optimal pH. We have three, um, three pH solutions. They are already ready. They are buffered, four, seven, and 10. You put the enzymes in them and then take them, mix them and the enzyme and substrate and then put them in. Um, and then um, put them in the boiling water. Look at the color change with Benedict solution. Which, which pH give us the best or optimal pH, which should be seven for this enzyme. So this concludes our experiments in labs, uh, labs uh, four and I mean five and six membranes and enzyme. Thank you for watching and please feel free to comment, like and subscribe and share. See you next time. Happy studying.